Welcome back everybody. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. Today we've got a firearms fact episode for you. We are going to be discussing most of the commonly available action types in uh, various rifles, shotguns, pistols, revolvers here we're going to be talking about. And the purpose of this video is for people that may not be 110% uh, on board with the different types of actions uh, that are out there. This will hopefully uh, allow you to walk away a little bit more prepared. Uh, maybe you're shopping for your first gun and you don't know what kind of action type is going to work for what you need or what you uh, prefer or what you like or anything like that. Two, maybe you just don't know what's out there and you need a, a little bit of a refresher on what's available. Or three, uh, maybe you are a law enforcement person who goes around the side of the road pulling people over and doesn't know anything about guns and needs to get a little bit of education about what you're looking at in a traffic stop. No matter who you are, what walk of life you come from, hopefully this video will inform you guys on uh, what's out there and how you can identify various types of firearms actions. Now, when I say action, I'm referring to the mechanism that the firearm in question uses primarily for you to actuate and use the gun. So when we refer to action types, we're referring to how the, the gun primarily is either fed ammunition and loaded or how the mechanism is manipulated. And that's what we're referring to here. I guess the best place to start is with muzzle loaders. I've got a couple uh, tucked off to the side here. All right, so this is a muzzle loading rifle. Okay, this is a Pedersoli Whitworth uh, rifle. Uh, this particular rifle, I'm not gonna go into like details on the individual rifles. This is mainly about action types is what we really want to talk about in this video but it is a percussion cap fired muzzle loading rifle so you see you have a lock here with a half cock position a full cock position and basically a charge is poured down the barrel the bullet is seated with the ramrod right here and then you place a cap on the uh, on the nipple this is called the nipple and then once the hammer's on full cock you simply squeeze the trigger the percussion cap ignites the charge and fires the bullet at the end of the barrel. It's a single shot rifle. Uh, you have to load it every single shot down the front of the barrel. Uh, these represent some of the most commonly encountered uh, and simple uh, muzzle loaders out there. Uh, you have different types of percussion caps. You have number 10s, you have number 11s, which are like the little smaller type of percussion cap. Then you also have a musket cap. The nipple on this Whitworth is designed to accept a musket cap. Most military guns accept musket caps. Most of your commercial guns accept a smaller type of number 10 or number 11 cap, all right? So percussion cap guns, these are the type of rifles you would use uh, during muzzleloader season for hunting, or if you're like me and you're a history enthusiast, this is a type of gun for you. So getting away from the front stuffer, here's a little bit more modern of a muzzleloader, and the, the where the two differences are, basically that's more of a traditional style of muzzle loader. This is a Silencer Co. Maxim. Uh, it is an, what they call a 209 or inline muzzle loader. So it's still muzzle loader. The projectile and powder still load from the front uh, of the firearm. This one has an integrated moderator uh, built into the, uh, into the muzzle loader. But the difference is to cap the gun for firing you breach the action, so this is a, like a breach style action, single shot. You breach it, you cap it, you cock it, and you shoot it. And where it gets its term inline is because everything is inline, as the name suggests. So an inline uses a 209 shotgun primer uh, to set off the charge. So modern muzzle loaders utilize 209 primers. They're a little hotter. Many consider them to be a little bit more reliable. Uh, not only in the field, but you also have more of a sealed system with an inline, whereby if you're working with a uh, percussion cap on a traditional uh, nipple on a regular muzzle loader, uh, you can get some form of moisture, dirt, other things that can cause the charge to not go off. So the inlines for modern hunters are a little bit more reliable, and that's why people tend to kind of go with the inlines over more of the traditionals for hunting purposes. So. There's your action types on your muzzle loaders. Guys, there's a ton of other actions out there, but these are the most commonly encountered uh, or, or some variant or form of these two actions in muzzle loaders. All right, I'm gonna set this to the side. All right, now getting away from black powder, now we're gonna go on to smokeless powder actions. All these guns, uh, for the most part, are gonna utilize uh, smokeless powder. 
We're going to start with a basic single shot. Um, this is an H&R SB2 10 gauge shotgun. There's a lever on the right side of the action here. You press it, it breaches it. So it's just a single shot rifle, or shotgun rather, but they also make these in rifle calibers as well. So on these H&Rs, Handy Rifles, Henry's, there's a wide variety of different single shot rifles and shotguns out there that can be had. And the way that you open the action really depends on the manufacturer. Now this one happens to have a little thumb lever on the side to open the action. Some of them will have a lever in front of the trigger guard that you have to depress. Some of them will have a lever back behind the trigger guard you have to pull up on to breach the action. Uh, the, some of them will even have like maybe a button on the side of the receiver you simply press to open the action. But the basic way that the firearm functions uh, is pretty much the same no matter how you open the action. The whole idea behind a single shot, obviously, put around in the chamber, close it, cock the hammer, bang, it shoots, open it up, the extractor is automatically cocked and spring-loaded, it pops open, throws the shell out, put another one in, and continue the process. Very basic, very utilitarian, very inexpensive, which is great. A single shot rifle or a single shot shotgun is a great way to get into hunting or just playing around shooting or, you know, just to, to become a firearms owner and just own a gun. Single shots do represent a very inexpensive, uh, affordable, yet high quality way uh, to be able to get into a firearm without spending a ton of money. So there's your single shots. Okay. We are going to talk about more single shots, um, but this is just slightly different action. So here's a variant on a single shot. Uh, this is called a Remington rolling block. And with a Remington rolling block, the hammer uh, basically pivots on one axis and the breech block pivots on another axis. Not unlike the way that the other single shot rifle works, but on this, the hammer is cocked all the way before you open the breech block. The breech block simply pivots and exposes the chamber. You insert a round into the chamber, you close the breech, and the gun is ready to fire, okay? So a Remington rolling block, there are, you know, some sporting rifles, and many of these available in the surplus market uh, throughout the years. A lot of these guns are out there, and a lot of people encounter them and hunt with them, and it's just one of those types of action types is your Remington rolling block, okay? And when you're getting into a little bit more of like, let's just say the Ruger number ones, uh, Peabody style action. Uh, we're talking an action that utilizes a dropping breech block as opposed to a hinged barrel assembly that pops away from a fixed breech. So getting into this, now the barrel is fixed. This is a greener GP, okay? It's a 12 gauge Martini action, Peabody action shotgun. Now the way this firearm works, that is different than what I just showed you. It's still a single shot, but the breech pivots downward when I depress this lever. So when this lever is pulled downward, it pivots the breech down and exposes the barrel. So I'm going to put a 12 gauge round in there, close it, safety off, bang, shoot it. When I eject the cartridge, smartly pull down, the block pivots down. When that block pivots down, it pushes down on a on a little pair of legs that pull an extractor rearward and throw the cartridge out of the chamber. Very simple, very easy, and there are a lot of modern sporting guns that utilize a very similar action to the Martini Peabody style uh, of action that you're going to see out there. Um, there's definitely some other um, actions out there that I don't have to show you, but basically you get the premise that single shot rifles afford one shot uh, per manipulation of the gun. You're going to open it, put the round in it, shoot it, eject the round, and repeat the process. That's a single shot rifle, single shot shotgun. All right, we're going to move back up to a pump action. All right, so where this is different, this is, a, this is an old Model 62 gallery gun from Winchester. Now, where this gun takes on a much different affair is you have a tubular magazine right here that you fill up with ammunition. So you pull this rod out. And guys, I know for some of you this is, this is real basic, but I'm trying to teach folks that might not understand what we're working with here. I'm just trying to educate folks that may not know about this stuff. So if this is a little bit old hat to you, uh, I apologize, but I'm just trying to make sure some of the newbies uh, are getting pointed in the right direction. You pull the magazine tube out, 
And what this is is a brass tube with a little plunger in the end of it and a spring inside of it which advances the cartridges through this tube right here. There's a little loading gate. You basically fill the loading gate up with ammunition until you see one pop up here. You replace the magazine tube which will then compress the spring inside of the tube. The follower will then be pushing on the cartridges. All right. This is a pump action rifle. So what, what you do on a pump action, you're usually going to have a four end that you just pull to the rear. Okay. And it doesn't matter if you're talking a pump action shotgun. Uh, there are pump action rifles out there. Uh, various types of, of all different kinds. I mean, guys, I know you've seen like Remington 870s, Mossberg 590s. Uh, all different varieties of different shotguns that utilize a pump action mechanism. Uh, this particular mechanism is a Browning design. Uh, you can see that when I pull back on the actuating lever, there is a spot that coincides with this bolt, pushes the bolt to the rear, simultaneously expelling the cartridge. When I pump it forward, the bolt closes and pushes the fresh cartridge into the chamber. So this is a very, very simple mechanism, very, very rugged and fun to shoot, okay? That's all there is to it, okay? Uh, pump action can be a little gallery gun like this, or it can be a you know modern 12-gauge uh, shotgun of some sort, but a pump action is basically gonna utilize that type of mechanism, and it's also gonna usually utilize some form of tube feed a uh, cartridge system that allows it to fire anywhere from two or three shots on up to as many as 30 depending on how it's set up. <clears throat> now, going from pump action, we're going to go down to lever action. All right, so this is another action type that you're commonly going to encounter. Um, this is a 1949 Marlin 336 and 32 Winchester Special. Uh, this is a nice older Marlin, very high quality Marlin. Uh, to use a lever action rifle, you're basically going to pump the lever forward and there is an arm that extends from this uh, lever here that, that actually intercepts into the bottom of this cylindrical bolt right here. And when you work that bolt, when you work that lever forward, it pivots the bolt backwards. And when that pivoting action occurs, there is a spring-loaded ejector on the inside of this receiver. If there's a round in the chamber, the extractor of the bolt will grab the rim, pull it to the rear, and that spring-loaded ejector pops the cartridge out once the bolt reaches its rearward apex of travel. When the lever is pushed home, that, that lever is pivoting forward, pushing the bolt forward, and it'll chamber the new cartridge. There is a lifter that this lever also actuates up and down to accept new, uh, cartridges from the tubular magazine. And you can see that this gun, unlike the Winchester uh, gallery gun that loads from the top loading gate, this has a side loading gate where to load the cartridges into the tube, you have to push them into the loading gate one by one. Very uh, high quality and a uh, very well used type of sporting rifle in the United States and dare I say all around the world as well. But lever actions are fast to work. The nice thing about a lever rifle is from a firing position, if you fire a shot, I'm gonna dry fire it. I can, I can have everything right there. The only thing to be mindful of is when you're working that lever, watch that finger because a lot of people sometimes will smash their finger in the lever or they'll, they'll have their finger right here, and what'll happen, see there, you'll smash that finger, just watch that trigger finger when you're working a lever action. Uh, they are quick to load, they are handy, they are elegant and lightweight rifles, very easy to carry around in the field, and a very popular option for hunting purposes. Or just playing and having fun, whatever you need to do. So, single shots, pump actions, lever actions, all right, bolt action. Um, just about every bolt action rifle that's out there is pretty similar overall. Uh, you are essentially going to have a few different types of bolt actions, which we're not going to get into every little detail. But let's just say that the way you manipulate a bolt action generally is about the same based on just about anything. If you pick up a rifle and there's a bolt hanging out the side like this, you can pretty much assume it's a bolt action. Simply lift it, 
pull to the rear, and there you go. That's exposing your action. So instead of having a lever that actuates a cylindrical bolt inside of a receiver, the bolt physically cocks, physically unlocks, and you're manipulating the bolt itself with the handle of the bolt action. And the reason this is round is because it pivots within your hand. So that, that pivot is, is afforded by my hand. When I go to work this bolt action, it is pivoting within my hand. Pull back. Same thing, it ejects the cartridge, chamber a new round. All right, but simply closing the bolt does not lock it in the battery. Turning the bolt down then locks the forward opposed locking lugs into the recesses of the receiver and the round is ready to shoot. A very simple, rugged, accurate, and reliable system for a hunting rifle and many military rifles from back in the day utilize bolt action mechanism. The Mauser 98 is probably one of the most copied bolt action mechanisms that there possibly is. In fact, this gun could be considered a miniature Mauser action. You have a, a claw right here which uh, does what they call controlled feed. As the rounds leave the magazine, the controlled feed mechanism of the, uh, of the way this extractor claw was made kind of makes the round kind of force itself into the bolt face and find its way every single time. So that means if I'm working this bolt laying over in a ditch like this, or if I'm working the bolt, I don't know, upside down even, I can work this bolt upside down and that controlled feed will feed that round in there. And that's why the Mauser action was such a popular design for a lot of these firearms manufacturers to copy because it's so reliable and it can be worked in a wide variety of different ways in the field and it'll always work. So hopefully that's an adequate explanation of a bolt action. It's pretty simple. You basically just have a series of lugs that lock into the receiver and lock the round into battery. If you've ever looked at like a artillery piece or uh, any type of big field gun where you see some crazy mechanism locking into place and these big lugs that lock in, it's basically that just on a really small scale. So there's your bolt action. All right, we're gonna talk about another type of bolt action. All right, this is a K31 Swiss service rifle. And now this is still considered a bolt action rifle, but where the difference is, is this is what they call a straight pull bolt action rifle. So you have a magazine, which we're getting into a magazine fed gun. As opposed, now this is a magazine fed gun as well. This has a detachable magazine and can be fed with stripper clips through the top of the action. We're not gonna get into that so much. This is mainly about action types. Now you notice, I just pulled that bolt straight back, okay? So the way this particular rifle works, and there are some sporting rifles out there that are based on a, uh, a straight pull type of action. You have like biathlon uh, type rifles that use a toggle style action that's not unlike a straight pull because you're literally just going straight back and straight forward. So you have both a toggle style of action as well as a cylindrical bolt. Like basically the way that this bolt mechanism is designed. I'll show you. You have uh, companies like Blosser uh, that are making like their R93, which is a straight pull bolt action. Um, the Swiss K31 uses basically an internally opposed bolt mechanism that is enclosed in a shroud that has a, a cut made into it, to it. So basically, instead of me turning my hand and working a bolt like we showed you on the other bolt action, that, that uh, amount of turning that's imparted on the bolt is afforded by this cut that is made into the bolt. So all I'm doing is pulling straight back and then the shroud is doing all the work because of the cuts that are made in the bolt to unlock uh, the actual bolt itself. You can see the two forward locking lugs right there that lock into the receiver when the bolt is slammed home. When it's slammed home, the opposite action is made by the actual operating rod and then the gun is in battery and it's ready to fire. Straight pull actions are very fast to work. When you're shooting from the shoulder, really quick to work, okay? So straight pulls have their place and it's a type of action that maybe not a lot of people know exists. So I thought that that would be something interesting to kind of show off. So there's your straight pull, your bolt action. All right, now we're gonna move on to semi-automatic actions. 
This is where it starts to get a little bit more complicated for people that are not gun people. And trust me, a lot of people screw this up, especially in the media, and <laughs> they get this wrong all the time because they just don't know what they're talking about. They throw around the ambiguous term assault rifle all the time. They throw around all these random terms, and they just don't know what they're talking about. Guys, here's the thing, okay? A semi-automatic rifle, we're going to talk about a couple of different types. All right, this is an M1 Garand. Okay. Now, I know this is going to seem kind of foreign to some people, but I'm going to try my best to explain it. It's actually quite simple if you just think about it for a second. Okay. This gun sort of is a bolt action, all right? In a way. Sort of, okay? It still has locking lugs. All right, you see that we do have a bolt right here, just like we have a bolt on any other type of gun. And we do have a camming surface in the op rod of this gun, not unlike the K31. The K31 is a manually operated straight pull. It, it's basically a semi-auto without a gas system in a way. This gun utilizes a gas system to operate the gun with each trigger pull. It uses gas pressure from the expanding gases of the projectile to operate the gun. So instead of me reaching up and working the bolt each time on this straight pull rifle like I just showed you, the gases do the work for you. So you see that if I pull this op rod to the rear, you can see that bolt begins to turn. See how it unlocks the bolt? There is a camming cut made into the op rod that cams this bolt in the unlock position. And then it's driven to the rear by expanding gas pressure. So you have an eight round in block clip that gets inserted into the grand. You push it home until it locks. The op rod and bolt and everything drive forward on the first cartridge. All right, so let's just pretend we got a live round in the gun. The, the bolt locks into place. All right, now we're, we're still in the territory kind of like the other guns. You squeeze the trigger, bang, all right, the gun discharges. <laughs> all right, round goes off, bullet travels down the barrel. Hot gases expand down the barrel, and they go down through this gas block, and they expand against this op rod, which if you look in the bottom of this gun right here, I'm going to work this op rod back. All right, look right here. See it moving? All right, that op rod, as the bullet passes over this gas system through the gas port, gases are driven back against this op rod and they force the op rod rearward, which, like the other mechanisms we already explained, which then cause the bolt to be driven rearward as the gases expand. They throw the round out and then they chamber a new round as long as there's a round in the, in the magazine. Pretty simple, all right, semi-automatic. One round per pull of the trigger. Bang, 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 until it's empty. Now, the Grand is kind of an interesting gun. It's kind of its own little brainchild there, but the reason I chose the Grand to show you is because you can clearly see those locking lugs rotating into place when that, when that uh, op rod is driven back and forth. You can clearly see the unlocking operation and the camming surface machined into the op rod that affords the bolt its ability to unlock and be driven to the rear. Semi-automatic guns have been around a long time, okay? All right, we're going to talk about another type of action. Now, the Garand uses what we call an M-block, Manlicker style uh, M-block clip. So it's a fixed magazine semi-automatic rifle. You see that the magazine does not remove from the gun physically. It's a fixed M-block style action. This is an AR-15. All right, they're very, very common semi-automatic rifles. Um, the action type on this, now we could get into a bunch of different types of semi-auto actions, but for the sake of this video, I just want to, you know, try to just clarify uh, what we're dealing with here. Now, this is a standard capacity magazine. It holds 30 shots. These have been around forever, okay? Uh, this is a 5.56 caliber rifle, okay? You have basically, instead of an op rod that's exposed on the side that reciprocates, we're kind of marrying some of the features of the lever action in a way, right, to some of the features of the grand in a way. Because what's happening is you, you still have a cylindrical bolt that travels within a fixed axis within the receiver, okay? 
you do have a way to pull that bolt to the rear. That's with this charging handle right here. So with an AR, you have a charging handle. It's located back here. It looks like a little T on the back. You pull it to the rear and it has a cut on the top of the charging handle that pulls against the bolt and pulls it to the rear. There's a return spring and a buffer located in here that, that are forcing that bolt to go home. There's always pressure on it, okay? Now what happens with this is really not unlike the Garand. This is a direct gas impingement semi-automatic rifle. One round per pull of the trigger. trigger. So with semi-automatic, basically you would take a full magazine, pull the charging handle to the rear, load it. This is a dust cover. You would close it if you were going around the field, whatever you're doing. So you would basically insert the fresh magazine, load it. Safety is located right over here. Fire is obviously for fire. Safe is for safe. All right. Squeeze the trigger. Bang. The gun goes off. Okay. The round travels at high velocity down the barrel. Once the, the round passes the gas port right here, this is, this is called a gas block right here. Once the round clears the gas block, the pressure that is behind the round equalizes into this gas tube and drives gas pressure through this gas tube back into the bolt and pushes the bolt rearward at a pretty fast velocity. All right, and when that happens, that, that round comes, uh, the bolt travels to the rear, ejects the spent cartridge, and then the spring pressure provided in the buffer assembly in the buffer tube, move the bolt forward, it falls naturally just as the next part of the firing cycle, strips a fresh round off of the magazine, and the process is repeated and you're ready to shoot again. One round per pull of the trigger. This is not a machine gun, it is not a full auto rifle, it is a semi-automatic rifle, no different than the Grand. It fires a relative, actually a much weaker cartridge than the Grand does. Uh, these are very, very common rifles. They are available all over the place. A lot of people have them. This is a super, super common gun that a lot of people in the United States have. They're all over the place. Unfortunately, the media kind of, you know, plays games with them uh, because they, they have a, a certain look to them. They do kind of look scary to some people. They're all black. They're vastly different than what we have uh, on the table here in terms of other gun designs, but the same basic operation of this gun is no different than the Garand or any other type of semi-automatic shotgun or rifle. All right, so that's your basic um, shotgun and rifle types. I mean, there are others out there, obviously, but these are the most commonly encountered types of actions. Uh, and for the purposes of just keeping this video kind of short, for handgun designs, we're going to just stick to the two most basic ones, okay? You have a revolver and you have a pistol. Very, very, very simple. In terms of revolvers, just like our muzzle loaders, guys, you have cap and ball revolvers that accept percussion caps and they load down the front of the uh, cylinder uh, by way of a ram rod that basically you compress to load uh, the revolver. So you have percussion cap revolvers, you have single action revolvers, and you have double action revolvers. I'm going to demonstrate both of those forms of function with the Smith & Wesson Model 10. So basically you have a series, all a revolver is is a series of chambers and each chamber houses its own round, okay? You have a fixed barrel and you have a rotating chamber, all right? That's the easiest way to look at it. When I load a revolver, I'm putting rounds in each of these individual chambers, I'm closing it and I'm indexing it, all right? The barrel stays fixed. That's why revolvers are so, are so accurate is because of the fixed barrel and the nice rigid frame and usually the nice tight fitting of these guns affords you a nice amount of accuracy, okay? So to manipulate a revolver, when the trigger is, and this gun's empty obviously, when the trigger is squeezed on a double action, what happens is I am, what I'm doing is when I'm double actioning a revolver, I'm doing two things. I am indexing the cylinder to the next shot while simultaneously cocking the hammer, okay? And once, once that cylinder locks up and that hammer meets its way of travel, watch, I'm going to stage up this double action. Bang, it shoots. All right, each time I double action it, it's going to rotate that chamber to the next 
the next round and this, the hammer is going to simultaneously cock and fire. The hammer is mounted directly to, uh, the firing pin is mounted directly to the hammer. On a single action gun, some revolvers are single action only, which means to index the cylinder and cock the gun, you cannot use the trigger in double action mode. You have to manually cock the hammer for each shot. So if this were a single action revolver, and let's say no matter what I do, it's not going to shoot unless I cock the hammer. So you, you could shoot it. Some, some people will, will do like kind of have their, their thumb like this, and they'll shoot like this or they'll wrap their thumb or whatever. But the thing is, on a single action, you have to cock the hammer, which simultaneously rotates the cylinder, and then you have a nice, crisp, single action squeeze to fire off your shot. All right. Cock, rotate, shoot. Very simple. So that's your two basic revolver designs. Revolvers are robust, simple, reliable, generally inexpensive, depending on what you buy. And uh, these are great for somebody who doesn't have a lot of experience with guns because they're super easy to use. All right. Then you get into a semi-automatic handgun. All right. So not unlike the way we discussed uh, semi-automatic fire, uh, with a pistol, you basically, this type of action design is uh, a little bit different. Okay. Then, I mean, obviously it's magazine fed. So just like the AR, uh, we have a, a detachable magazine which I load this with 17 rounds of ammunition and you can see the grip is hollowed out to accept the magazine okay and guys I know that I know this is sounding really really like elementary to some of you but I'm making this video with the hopes of trying to educate some folks that may not understand this stuff so just remember guys if this is old hat to you I'm not trying to insult any of you I'm just trying to teach people things so basically what happens with a magazine and a pistol is this is an enclosed box with a follower and it has a spring that's calibrated to a certain pressure. Okay, and what that spring does is it keeps constant pressure upward on the loaded rounds. So that's why when you load rounds in the magazine, you have to push down and it's a little bit of pressure because you're compressing that spring within the magazine. So what happens is you have all your rounds loaded in the magazine. You see the hollow in the grip, put the loaded magazine in. Now obviously this one's not loaded. Okay, so now you have a loaded magazine with spring pressure being put on the top round to make them feed into the mechanism. So the way, the way the mechanism operates is you have a slide and with these cock insulations on the back. Now a lot of handguns have slightly different variants of this basic design. This is a Smith & Wesson M&P 2.0, but guys, no matter if it's a Glock or any other type of gun, generally speaking, most semi-automatic handguns are going to operate in this way. Uh, you'll hold the gun in your right hand or if you're left-handed in your left hand, Take your opposite hand, you'll pull on these serrations right here, pull the slide to the rear. If you have a loaded magazine, which this isn't, but if you did, when you let go, when that slide uh, slams home, it's going to chamber around. And then depending on, you know, if the gun has a safety, you obviously take the safety off or whatever and the gun's ready to fire. Now, this is not intended to be like training or anything. I'm just explaining that it is a semi-automatic pistol. So, Every time you squeeze the trigger until the gun is empty, you're going to get one round per pull of the trigger. It is not full automatic. You do not pull, hold the trigger down. It doesn't brrr, shoot full auto. Bang, 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 bang. All right, last shot, bang. Okay, it locks the slide to the rear. When the magazine is empty, the follower of the magazine pushes up on the slide stop and it holds the slide to the rear. And that lets you know, and especially as you get more experienced as a shooter, you feel the impulse and you feel when that slide locks to the rear, you don't have to wonder if your gun's empty. You know because you feel that that slide didn't ram on home. You hit the magazine release, flick your mag out, fresh one in, you know, rider home and keep shooting. Uh, Semi-automatic lock breech uh, pistol. Now some pistols have what they call blowback design. Some have a lock breech design. Some of them utilize a variety of other mechanisms. But at the end of the day, they're basically about the same overall uh, type of, of action. It's a semi-automatic pistol. So that is really about all the actions in a nutshell. Um, there are others out there. There are a ton of crazy experimental type things. 
I mean, there's obviously different bolt actions that have, you know, slightly different amounts of uh, degree of bolt tilt and things like that. Guys, there's different types of sen uh, single shot rifles, pump action rifles, uh, lever action, semis. We did not cover every single thing that's out there, but what we did try to do is to try to explain uh, really kind of the ins and outs of the most basic types of action types and maybe even a couple of action types that you didn't realize even existed. So maybe some of you learned something from this video. And the purpose of this video is try to educate you guys and make sure that if you're not in the know that now you are. And I hope I did a, a reasonably good enough job of explaining it. Uh, guys, if you like this video, let us know. We'll do more of these types of, uh, of firearms facts. Uh, if you enjoyed this video and you learned something, consider uh, maybe uh, donating a little money on Patreon to help us out or maybe purchasing a man cam. We would greatly appreciate it. Uh, we appreciate all of our viewers and all of the continued support that they give us. Guys, we make these videos for y'all. We want y'all to be happy with them. Let us know what you want to see. We'll do our best to uh, accommodate it for you. Uh, we hope you enjoyed the video. We hope you learned something. Until next time, we'll see you. And uh, we got more on the way, many more videos. Uh, more firearms facts. We also have a series we do called Gun Gripes, where we talk about things that are going on in the 2A community. We have a series called Meltdowns, where we take uh, guns to kind of the extreme and see how much, <laughs> how much full auto fire they can take before they destroy themselves. Uh, guys, we do all different ty types of stuff. So if you're a newbie and you're just tuning into my channel and you discovered this video, consider subscribing and learning a little bit more and checking out some of the other stuff we have. Uh, I think you'll, you'll like it here. But anyway, thank you very much for watching, and we'll catch you next time.